a cataract, white opacity, dense brown, and you remove it. Patient doesn't know what was done and is happy. I think we now, patients are demanding, and it's good that demanding, because they are demanding because we have created and made them aware that we can do so many things. Sometimes in our enthusiasm, we, we overdo it, and we, we are paying the price for it in some areas. But basically, we need to make, make made for you. But, but as uh, Dr. Shail said in his opening uh, statements, the whole focus now has changed from the technicalities how to perform, how to make incision, one plane, three plane, rexes, this rexes, that. It's all okay. Everybody does a great job of lens removal without rapture, without uh, corneal edema. What is now important is to deliver to this patient good quality vision. And I don't mean necessarily spectacle free vision because uh, to progress, we moved from this uh, concept to give a uh, Refractive cataract surgery as the name given to the surgery, which is good, and it helps us to uh, refine our IOL calculation and so on. But now we move on even beyond refractive cataract surgery, and our aim is to give a quality functional vision, which may mean using uh, some glasses at some point of time. So you must understand that the baseline is to deliver quality, good functional vision. And, and uh, this is... Uh, Dr. Samresh, whom you will hear next, has made this wonderful animation of what this traditional multifocal of plus 3, 3.25, 3.5 do to our, uh, to our vision that uh, the, the distance vision goes to the peripheral part and the, the rings and diffractive element gives a near focus and therefore patients are able to see both. And patients were very happy when we started this in our evolution. And, and there are, as I said, these are the traditional multifocals, and there are various examples of it. But soon the industry realized, and the clinician realized, and patients made us aware by complaints because they were unhappy. That it's okay that they can see uh, without glasses, but majority or many of these people who were educated, who were demanding, active individuals, younger ones, were not very happy. They were not terribly excited about it. So in a way, it delivers something but, but it's like a quality versus flexibility of not using. But all of these lenses, uh, including trifocals, have dysphotopsia inherent in the designs. So we must tell these patients, and if some patients you must avoid if they have that particular. So we need to judiciously combine this quality uh, of vision with extended range of vision. And that, that's what the prudence the experience in your locality, in your patients, will come. Now, this is something you'll keep hearing about it, and many of these terms are more of a marketing than of a true science, like extended depth of focus lenses. They actually are low-add multifocals. In this example, it could be plus 1.75 add, and they function exactly like low add, and we'll come to that. So all of these actually uh, is the optical uh, genesis, how they give this extended depth of field of vision. But it is the extended depth of field of vision that we are interested. How we do it is it's an individual case uh, scenario and in your choice and, and experience. So. Uh, one of the things which is necessary for that is depth of field, and many of us, I didn't understand the depth of field, and once again, somebody showed this, this beautiful diagram, that uh, the area which you are seeing now in the focus interest, and in front and around in a 360 degree sphere, is the depth of field, still getting a, acceptable uh, clarity on those focus subjects. And these uh, low power ads, uh, small aperture IOLs, and extended depth of focus IOLs, which is actually, as I said just now, our 1.75 add multifocal, do that. Now, low power add, uh, unlike the traditional multifocal, gives a better distance vision because the, the, the rings are designed in such a way in all these three companies that they give more distance vision, akin or almost like distance vision, but also, in addition, they give intermediate vision uh, because this distance vision is good because it comes from many regions of the IOL surface and this is an intermediate uh, looking at SMS and uh, watching television at the same time. 
So TV watching and texting is good because of these low ad and uh, some race explains uh, this way. So this is one example of that, which is really designed for distance and also give intermediate vision better than monofocal, better than multifocal lens, traditional multifocal lens. So this is the only lens, these three lenses, which gives uh, good distance vision and, and a good intermediate. The Symphony, the 2.5, uh, the Oculentis, and so on. And uh, however, all of these three lenses will need two things. One is the low power readers, and generally they are about 1.25 or whatever, but remember they all will need extra light. So please tell them before you, they, you decide on the lens that you will need an extra light, and if you cannot have that, please do not go for lenses. So this is uh, a simple example of an, uh, that, that concept going on uh, in, the, in the eye, in the bag, and total cover is good. So as I said, they have a good distance vision, better intermediate, but also they have a less incidence. In my experience, it's minimal. It's not 100% nil, but it's minimal bothersome uh, dysphotopsia of halos and glare because of the uh, design, the area which is there. And they do need extra light, and this is very important. Extra light, contrast sensitivity, you know, all this multifocal, including symphony, including everything, goes down uh, compared to monofocal. So you must tell the patients, and this is how the, the, the company explains how they arrange uh, that extended depth there. All right. Now, uh, but there are, so therefore, there are category of patients when you say made for you, the patients who are die hard say, I don't want doctor any glasses. I don't want to be seen with glasses. It's, it's not good for my profession, my image, and my, my mindset. You can consider uh, many things. One of them is blended vision, as they call it. In other words, treat one eye for a distance and intermediate, and, and treat other eye uh, with a reading. And uh, like uh, people have done with monovision, with monofocal. Now, this is a traditional multifocal of Zeiss, Technis, Restore, whatever, plus 3Ad, which will give a, a good distance. So you can see that uh, uh, the, lap, the mobile uh, material going on, and 2.5 giving a, a very nice intermediate on the, on, the, on the desk there. So you can blend this eye, and, and you can do that, and trifocal does uh, more or less same like the traditional multifocals, but has an advantage of giving a better intermediate vision uh, depending upon the designs they go for. And there are, at the moment, three major companies making uh, similar concept with very minor modification of the distance that intermediate will give 60 centimeter or 75 and so on. But, but whatever that is, they all are, are an improvement on the traditional multifocal, but it will still have the same negative of dysphotopsia, and still they will have a low contrast. There is other co clever concept in acufocus lenses, and, and Kimura, uh, the Kimura, or whatever you call it, in a corneal implant, has the same principle, same company, makes a small pupil IOLs, and then we have in our course next September, uh, Dr. Fernando Trinidade coming in our, as a faculty, and he has developed such a uh, uh, concept, a very beautiful lens, which gives a good uh, cosmosis and also uh, good depth. And this is what that Sumrish diagrams comes back, extended depth of fill. Uh, but once again, you have to pay the price, and the price is in the illumination. So you need an extra illumination because of that you will say. So whatever you decide, you understand the product or a technology, but more important is to understand the patient, because you want to do ma made for you patient, and therefore all the profile which you heard in the first, uh, first uh, lecture, and understand the patient, and counsel and counsel and counsel. I take much more time now in, than ever before uh, I've done in my career, because you need to understand and counsel negative, and the positive of that concept you have. There are many other lenses coming up. This is one more example. Uh, this is a new concept to remove the dysphotopsia. This is Dr. Masket, where he based this uh, IOL fixation on the groove, uh, which is like a maritazignon uh, bag in the IOL concept, but fixating only in the anti-capsule, and that uh, dysphotopsia is good. Probably it will have more PCO, like the reverse optic capture. 
and there is another lens which my friend Gerd Alfat showed me, Femtis. All of both of these lenses will work better with flex rexes because you can control the size uh, of the opening and therefore you can fixate, but guaranteed no negative dysphotopsia or any other kind. So once again, I just want to remind you, it, it is not a refractive cataract surgery alone now. We need to move from refractive cataract surgery to deliver good quality of function. And I'm just going to go very, tell me about the time. Okay, so this is a case of 82 years old lady, uh, has become forgetful now, and I'm, I can understand her. I, I'm also, my memory is not as sharp as it used to be. So I understood her very well, had to buy a little cataracts, and we advise our multifocal traditional. You can decide your lens of choice, but traditional multifocal. And she doesn't need to bother about and depend on her higher cortex. And she's happy because the requirements were limited. Now, this is unlike that case, a, an active individual, professional individual, but also a hobby of playing sports. And therefore, uh, his range of vision, but he's worried. He's heard about the stories about the friends that if they were not happy. This patient, but it's so familiar to us, isn't it? When a patient comes and we suggest that you can consider multifocal and then say, yeah, but you know, my friend, he's not very happy. So that, that spreads very fast, uh, all the negatives. So we advise him uh, that you can still consider 2.5 low ads because you will have a good range as, a, as a, an intermediate, in a, as an uh, active professional, IT individual, banker, whatever, and you can do your hobby but minimal glare. So uh, as long as you understand, you'll have to wear reading glasses. So those who are very fastidious, like some of us, or who are very precision-oriented, they want everything nice. This is one option. Other option would be to blend that, and we'll come to that in a minute. But these all are additional benefits of monofocal, but that does mean reading glasses for more, less than N8 or N10 size on a bright light. So you decide. Many patients won't mind accepting reading glasses, but it, it, you need to discuss it out. It is compatible with uh, unilateral cataract, as was mentioned in the first one, and, and it works all the time on the computer. And as you would expect, uh, the, he, he, the, his complaints with glare and eye strain, but like the volleyball in the previous case, he goes on a weekend with motorbike. So no halos we want. Uh, it's dangerous traffic all over India now, not only in Coimbatore, everywhere. Uh, we, we decided that give a lens which is minimal halos or practically no, unilateral low add, uh, compatible with a natural fix, so you can do that. And we now have uh, getting interested in blended vision, which we're never interested because we always believe the symmetrical input to the visual cortex is superior, but there are individuals who won't mind that. So we are now uh, placing a traditional multifocal in the one eye where the, we want to give a reading vision more and, and uh, other eye with low ads. And this is a typical example that uh, this is actually a retired teacher of one of our children, li likes watching TV, knitting activities on WhatsApp, and, and uh, do everything with our glasses. She wanted that. So we, we considered, talked about it, and we said we'll put plus three distance near and uh, this thing there. So the patient was very happy, and uh, this is the outcome. So finally, my, my, my pulse and what I learned in my journey that uh, you must mention the limitation of the technology first before you say, I'll give you roses and flowers and everything. It is our moral duty, ethical duty, and legal responsibility to tell them, please, this is a limitation of what, if you want to achieve, and if I want you to help you to achieve the target of minimal dependence, you will, in the package, have these limitations. And if you understand how important it is to have not to wear glasses, you will accept it. There's also a thing called neurosensory adaptation, and you will get used to it. But you, in other words, counseling, counseling, and counseling. Thank you so very much. I think more and more of us are realizing that not just multifocal IOLs are not just the only IOLs which are important, but treating or correcting as much of refractive error is becoming equally important. And one of the most common refractive errors which 
we as surgeons have ignored for many, many years is astigmatism. That, you know, if it's less than this much, forget about it, this kind of incision, that kind of incision, so on and so forth. But now I think time has come and it's time tested the technology that toric IOLs need to be incorporated for every surgeon's armamentarium. So it's not just for the uh, extremely, uh, you know, fancy practices or hi-fi practices, but toric IOLs is something that needs to be incorporated in every surgeon's day-to-day -day cataract practice. And why do I say that? Because pre-existing corneal astigmatism is a problem. We evaluated 2,000 eyes who had come just for the routine